I've added some extra bits to the bag because I'm doing it as an actual setup today. But you get this with it, which is the oven tray and a little oven grill. This part I'll go into in a bit, show you what that's for. I've bought my gloves, you should always wear some nice welder's gloves or some heavy duty gloves for when handling hot surfaces. That's a shelf that goes on the back, so you can put your pots and pans on or you can dry stuff on it, hang wet clothes or shoes, put shoes on it. is extra I bought a fire blanket it's just to go under it on surfaces that I don't want to get burnt a few wood wall fire lighters which I added which is my own I put in with it so let's get it out of the bag back to the channel we're out doing a test of the stove this is part three of the Ozark trail tent conversion with the hot stove so I'm going to show you some of the stuff I don't know how much footage I'm going to get we're making a quagmire I'm using land that was um I asked if I could have come on it's private and I am making a mess on this floor the plan was to do an overnighter but it's not going to stop raining all day the tents obviously waterproof but everything we tread on we're destroying i'll show you here that's just from walking around a little bit and i don't want to mess up his ground i mean i'm doing a mess here now and i feel bad about it so let me tell you what's new with the tent i built some toggles finally bought a sewing machine 40 pounds on um, ebay it's on a collection only so it made it easier for me nobody else bid on it so easy to go and get it. It's only about 15 miles away. No, oh, actually, what am I saying? Nine miles away. That's how far it was. I sewed this because I'm going to make some more tie backs for the doors because there's no tie backs on the tent for the doors. And it's okay, it would work. But I thought I looked at this piece of material I've got left over and I thought if I cut that grey strip off, they'd make great tie backs. They're already sewn, aren't they? We've got to do a sewing to the tent. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut the grey strip off. I've got quite a bit of this material left. Just try not to cut the grey bit as well. Just cutting the black bit. Just saves me having to sew up the black stuff. Because I've already got something sewn. It's only a tie back. So the tent has got these tags on it, which I'm recreating for the door. And it's got these little plastic toggles on it. So what I'm, I'm going to do is I've got a bit of this seasoned, I think it's hazel, I don't know what this is, but it's hardwood. I'm going to make some toggles out of what's on the end. So I'm going to cut these, give them a little bit of sanding and shaping and try and create some toggles for the ones I create. Do you know, I might actually cut a section out and then split it and then use the halves to make the toggles because this looks too short to me. I'm actually thinking this might be ash now. I remember where I got it from. I need to control this split, so I'm using the axe to just to bang it down the hatchet. That split lovely. Make some toggles out of that. Let's see if we can split this one, it's nice. So there's the first one I've done. It's just been whittled down with a knife and the edge is all nicely shaped and rounded so it doesn't catch on the material of the tent. So it's smoothed off really. Just use the whole force to whittle that down on the board. So I'm gonna do a couple more of these. I think I'm gonna need, I'm gonna do for it four, whether I use four, I don't know. So 
you just take that sharp bit off and then I'm sure that a little rub with the fine paper and just take out that last piece. I mean, I could use the knife and just keep whittling away to get rid of sharpness, but I've got this. I found it in the drawer, so I'm going to use it. Always use what you've got. That just rounds it up lovely. So that's not going to catch anything when it's being packed away or set up. Yeah. Just enough, should be enough to get the tape through and come back on itself so it'll just be toggled like that and that'll be sewn to the tent. That's how it's going to be finished. This is it stitched. I've done three of these now. I'll show you the inside. So that's the inside of the stitching. So I've unpicked the outside to get this through because this is a loop. It was sewn as a loop to go through. And then I've restitched it. So this needs a bit of seam sealer pasted over it because it's gone through the original seam sealer. And that's the toggles added. So there's two on one side of the door and one on the other. Reason that being, when I was drilling one of the toggles, I didn't put it in the little vise, I had it in my hand, and it flew off, and it's somewhere in the kitchen, probably in pieces, like my fingers were. So never hold small things when you're drilling them with a Dremel. Learn from your mistakes. I stitched all these in, and made some extra door flaps for toggling back, because the doors couldn't stay open before. You couldn't have actually put any way of holding them back. The ones that they've put on the tent are over here, right around here. So you can do half a tent when it's held back, but you couldn't do just the doors. I've just put the chimney in, that's installed. I've just cut a hole through the flap. And I've also, if you see there's a silicon sheet hung on there. So when it's not in use, it, hold, it goes over the hole. Hope you can hear me. It's, it is getting really um, rainy now. So let's try and get that lit. Pit has come out for this one. All right. So let's try and get it lit and then I'm going to do a proper stove review of the stove when I've used it and do it so I can give you all the measurements and specs and do a proper review of this stove for anyone that's interested and all its little bits that come with it. So this is the hole I've cut, not the neatest but that can be trimmed later. It is touching against it slightly but we'll see if that burns right on. So like I say, this is, um, this is an oven stove. That is the oven in there. It is an Outbacker firebox range oven stove. 
So this is our burn chamber. It's already had a burn in it. Outbacker Stoves sent me this to do a review on. So thank you Outbacker Stoves. Your review will be coming and it will be proper spec review. This is actually in use review now. Well in use usage before I do the review. You ready Peter? Yeah. Peter's always ready for it. We've got food. We've got wood, which I've managed to cut in the dry inside a shed, so I'm lucky for that. There's food in there. We're all ready to roll. But like I say, I'm, I, we've made a decision already before we even started filming. We're not staying here because we're mashing up the, the property. And it's, you know, in the woods it's different, but when it's someone else owns it, it's not fair. And he did say to me that he really likes this ground to only be used in April to October because of this reason. So I'm uh, really sorry, Sam, for um, the mess. I know it'll grow back, but it just looks awful. And we're going to keep it as limited as possible by not staying here and just constantly tramping on it. Anyway, you just don't want to see me waffle. You want to see me load this up and get it started. Then we can shut the doors and see what the temperature gets to. I brought a thermometer with me and I've got a, a heat gun as well that you zap thermometer so we can find out exactly where our heats are. So it's a good, good little test of the stove. So we're just going to throw a load of this small stuff I've just cut up in. I have measured how much I can get in length. It's eight inches. It's going to be perfect to get in. If you go any more than that, nine's your max. Put a little ash pan in there. So this is the wood wall we're going to use. I've been using it for a few years now. And on these sort of days, I'm going to just go with this because it works. Wind's getting up now as well. Turn this off. And I pass the track. Yes, Peter, it's not going to be hot yet. So we're going to get some smoke come out of this, as you can see. It's just started. Got the vent open to let it draw air in and up the chimney. So let's go out and see how much smoke is coming out, because in theory, there should be a lot. Burning well, drawing well. Just worry about that chimney though, and how it's blowing in that wind. Chimney's blowing around up there, Pierre. But the problem we got is um, we can strap it down. There's a there's a thing there to hold it down. It's that um. Jubilee clip, and that's for holding it down in wind. I 
we'll get the old fire going, we're going to get the door shut and see what the temperature changes to. I'll find my temperature gauge and we'll see what it is now. Right, I picked up a laser pointer gun with temperature on it. So if I fire it at the ground, you'll see what temperature is outside. That's the temperature outside. Basically 0.6 of a degree on that ground. The tent is the same. The stove pipe, one degree. 0 0.8, five degrees on the bottom of the pipe coming out the jack. I don't know whether you can see the actual laser on there. So that's 11 degrees on that pipe Celsius. Let's go and measure up the stove. It's only been running for about five minutes. So right above the firebox, it's 280. The oven's got a temperature gauge on it. So above the oven, you can probably see the laser on it. It's 86. The pipe, 144 at the bottom. As we go up, to where the stove jack is, it's 20. Around the stove jack, it's chilly, 10, 12 degrees, so I should be able to touch it. It's not even warm. And that's 20, so that's hardly warm at all. You can push your hand against it. The fire's going well, so we could, in theory, get something to cook on there, 280. Let's see what the oven's reading. There's the oven. It's coming up. Peter's on about 100 packet of crisps already. There's no sparks at all coming out of this. It's getting going properly now. I was concerned, if you remember in the other videos, about it getting near the hood on the air vent. But that seems okay as well. Right, if you're planning to do a stove in a tent, it's always good to have a carbon monoxide sensor because this could save your life. And I'll do a big shout out to Steve and Thomas who donated to the channel and I bought this and some other little pieces like the radar gun for the temperature. So thank you very much for the donations to the channel, Steve and Thomas. Really appreciate it. And I put everything back into the channel that's donated, as I say. Thank you very much. So I've just turned this on and done the test, which I would hear if I had a carbon monoxide problem in there, it's loud. And it beep again. So I'm going to keep this in the tent with us while we're in it. And if we were sleeping in it, you've got to have, you've got to have one. But the temperatures are coming up still. It's feeling warm in there now, I'll tell you. 300 on the top of that. My concerns are where it goes through the tent because I don't want to burn anything. 24 is nothing. That is browning though on the edges of this. Look at that. Where it's touching it. But browning is not a problem to me as long as it's not going to catch fire. And that might be because it's dripping down some soot and that's probably soot. I don't think that's actually a heat problem. Not at 30 degrees it ain't. Yeah, that's soot. You can see it on the pipe. So I'm going to shut the door because it's actually feeling warm. Are you warm, Peter? Yeah. 
Yeah, let me shut the door and see how warm I can get. Getting hot. It's getting muddy as well. This wind is getting up too strong for me, I think. I might have to down this because this is getting out of the hand. This isn't forecast. And I don't want that stovepipe touching my tent. This might have been an abandonment. It's forecast sunny and um, gusts of 14 miles an hour, an average wind of six. This, this is proper ma madness now for running a hot, hot tent. And we're not in a sheltered area. And my camera fell in the mud. So I think I might have to call it guys, sorry, but I don't want to ruin the tent, I don't want to mash up any more than I have done. Oh, I've got all the stuff in there to do it, the cooking, all of it, but the weather is not done what it's supposed to do. Yeah, so to be on the safe side and not ruin my tent, which I spent hours making, I feel like we need to turn this down and get it out, lower the stove, take out that, let that wood burn out and then call it a day. Got it, I've been waiting for this. But this experience tells you when to pull out I suppose. Be safe. Don't risk it if you don't need to. There'll be another day, another burn, another stove, another hot tin. So thanks for watching. Keep, keep looking around for um stay on the channel keep checking for videos this will come out as soon as it becomes easier i've got a camp coming up with a group of youtubers soon and it'll be coming out on that so for this one i'm really sorry i'm, I'm gonna have to pull it out thanks for watching bye bye